getting into the actual topic about you know the tangent planes so let's do some review about surfaces and some of the equations of the plane and the line well so recall that we've been working with function with, in, with explicit function of x and y that's when we have the function in equal to z but in some cases it's uh, it's necessary or even more convenient to write these functions in implicit form that is we move all the variables to one side and redefine a new function f okay so and well that's uh and that's going to specify uh, different uh, surface levels which we will review here so we have this function f of x y and z 4x squared plus 4y squared plus 4z squared minus 36 and let's describe the level surfaces give the level surface given by f of x equals to zero so what are we going to do well set this equation equal to zero so that's 4x squared plus 4y squared plus 4z squared minus 36 equals to zero okay let's solve let's leave the variables on the left hand side and of course we can reduce this uh, this coefficient we can we can re divide both sides by 4 to get x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals to 9 and well what surface is this it's a sphere the sphere center at the origin zero 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 and what's the radius in this case three all right that's number whose square is the right hand side let's look at a similar example we have f of x y z equals to x plus three y plus nine c plus twelve so x plus three y plus nine z plus twelve equals to zero and well so let's just have that constant term on the right hand side there's not much to do about this equation however we can identify the what, what surface is this and well my hint is look at the exponents of each exponent. it's a plane right because all exponents are you know are raised well all the exponents are one whenever we have exponents equal to two well we have a bunch of possibilities such as paraboloids uh, cylinders uh, hyperboloids of two sheets hyperboloids of one sheet you name it so there's a few well again we just need to look back to that to those equations all right another thing that we want to recall to put this together in the context of tangent uh, of tangent planes well we need to know we need to re recall what the equation of a plane well there's a misspelling here there should be a u here all right so so number one let's recall what the equation of a plane is so number one that e that equation of a plane contains the point p x naught y naught z naught and also contains the normal vector a b and c you might recall from well when we did that derivation of the equation so you can again you can always think of the table as a plane and, oops. and that plane always has this nor this normal vector which is orthogonal to every single point or to every single or to every other vector that you can generate between two points in that lie on the plane and well that equation was given by a x minus x naught plus b times y minus y naught plus c times z minus z naught equals to zero and the reason why we get that equal to zero is because the way we derive this equation is by getting any any vector on the plane and create and do the dot product of that vector and that orthogonal vector we do what is supposed to obtain when we use, when we multiply two vectors and we get zero what is that 
So it's orthogonality, right? So, to, so really this is a dot product and because it's zero, we got that from that orthogonality property. But of course, if you worked out, if you work out this equation, uh, I'm only gonna do all steps. There's an alternative, ax plus b, y plus c, z equals to d. That's the other variable. Well, that's actually the simplified version of the equation. So we start with that direction vector and that given point on the plane, and in the end we get that form. The equation of a line, so the equation of a line in, in parametric form or in vector form, so number one contains, contains again a point, P, X naught, Y naught, and Z naught. And also contains the direction vector direction vector which is simply given by a b c and well just come just backtracking a little bit to that idea of getting a, a line in 3d well uh, back then we defined uh, we defined this linear equation but not in the sense of a slope recall that back then we didn't we didn't talk uh, uh, about the slope because really the slope in 3D is in different directions both the x direction or the y direction in, in the very basic case and then the directional derivative which is well from any point on the surface you can walk to infinitely many and place infinitely many direction and that direction will have of course its steepness but for a line we really didn't use that rise over run which is the analogous thing in you know, in basic algebra, so it was defined a little different. So instead of having that slope, we got this in the direction of this vector. So if we define this as R of t, and that's x naught, y naught, z naught. So this same initial point, it's actually the, the vector. Well, no, it's not a vector, never mind. So that's a plus t times a, b, c. So these are the two pieces of information that we need to recall before getting into finding tangents, all right? So tangent planes in this case. So what's next? So let's define the equation of the tangent plane. So number one. So here's a picture. So we have a surface here. And well, notice the, this curve r x r uh, x x of t y of t and c of t lies on the surface you know so those are these um these vectors in pink and in this case well we're going to have a vector that is going to be normal to that tangent plane which also happens to be the same vector that is normal to the plane that is tangent at that initial point so we're going to derive an equation for to get the equation of a, I mean, a, the equation for the norm for the to, for the tangent plane. So number one, let's recall something from back a couple of sections ago. So using a chain rule, well, notice number one. We have a function f of x, y, and z. However, these variables x, y, and z are also depending on another variable. Uh, lucky for us, they just depend on one single variable, t. So, because otherwise, if they depended on two variables, then we would have to use two expressions for the chain rule for each independent variable. So, lucky for us, well, in this case, that chain rule will not be a partial derivative, in fact, it will be an ordinary derivative. And so that's going to be, okay, the partial of f with respect x times dx dt plus, so that's for the change in the x direction and then for the, x in, for the change in the y direction, dy dt plus uh, partial f with respect 
z d z d a, dt. And well, we can set this equal to zero because again, when we are creating an implicit function which is that big f, we set it equal to zero, but if we are differentiating this f function, what's the derivative of zero? Isn't it also zero? So it makes sense to keep setting it equal to zero. So that's one piece of information that we need. What else do we need? The derivative of, of the line of the curve r, so in this case it's simply dx dt dy dt dz dt all right and also we need the gradient of that given function which is given by nabla f that is again it's the partial derivatives it's a vector. Recall that we define in a way as an array to store a couple of a few pieces of information. And in this case, the information that we store is the rate of change in the x direction, the rate of change in the y direction, and the rate of change in the z direction. But it's not only that, actually that vector would give us the direction of steepened ascent, the steepest ascent or uh, steepest descent depending on the sign. So it's not just how we store the information. So, okay. Let's have a look at, the, at these last couple pieces of information. The gradient and the derivative of the, of the linear equation in 3D. Doesn't this look like a dot product? So, okay, let me highlight. Okay, so this is dx dt, dx dt, and okay, dy dt, dy dt, and dz dt, dz dt, and at the same time, this looks like I mean, what what am I doing here? I'm I'm looking at this df dt, the chain rule, in a backwards way in terms of the derivative of the, of, the, of the parametric equation of the line and the gradient of the given function. In other words, if we do nabla f dotted with the derivative, that should be zero. And isn't it a condition for the dot product? So, in, 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 and it's there because notice how this uh, tangent plane is orthogonal to that plane and to that uh, line, actually, to that line uh, that is parameterized. It's really, and then we take the derivative of that, right? So, that's how we should get the equation of a plane. All right, uh, a couple more pieces of information. Well, so the, the formal definition, well, so if we have a differentiable function f at the point x0, y0, z0 on a given surface, on a surface given by f of x, y, and z, such that the gradient at that point is not zero, well, number one, the plane P that is normal to the gradient at the point is called the tangent plane to S to the surface S at the given point P, and also the line through P that is normal to the gradient, it's called the normal, uh, I should have said, normal line, right? The normal line to S, which is this, uh, this line that we have in blue, that is also orthogonal, all right? So what are we doing here? So we're putting together what we looked at back in chapter 13, and but in this case, within partial derivatives to find this time equations of a plane. All right. So, uh, more definitions. So, let f be a differentiable, let be differentiable at the given point, x naught, y naught, z naught, then an equation of the tangent plane to the surface given implicitly. Well, so make sure that we write everything as a function f, not a, well, actually, there's a version if we leave it explicitly and well 
Check out this equation. It's partial left with respect x, x times x minus x naught, plus partial left with respect y times y minus y naught, and partial left with respect z times z minus z naught. All right? And I think this one resembles that equation that we reviewed before, a x minus x naught plus b times y minus y naught plus z, I mean at plus c times z minus z naught equal to zero, except that these coefficients are the coefficients from the gradient of the surface, all right? So that's why we did this mini review, so you can see how we're gonna put this together with getting that equation of a tangent plane. All right, so that's the version when we when we do the, the surface, uh, when we treat the surface in implicit form, if we do it in explicit form, well, then we have this uh, function z as an f of x, y. So we're not creating another big f function. Well, so this will be z sub t, and this subscript big t, it's to denote that that is indeed the equation of the tangent plane on the surface at a given point. And well, in this case, that's simply the partial f with respect x times x minus x naught plus partial f with respect to y times y minus y naught, and we add the value of the function f of x zero, y zero. And well, the equation of the normal line, so again, so we want, so that's in general, again, the, the equation of a, of a line in parametric form or in vector form. However, this vector that multiplies the variable t is going to be in the direction of the normal vector uh, that lies on the plane. So that's why in this case, it's going to be the gradient of the function at that given point. So it looks like a lot of symbols, uh, I, I agree. However, uh, once we do, once we see this in action, it's a lot of the, a lot of this is gonna be pretty, very straightforward because most of the calculations we already did a few times back in chapter 13 and back in, back in, la in the last couple of sections. All right, question? For definition number two in the first box, it says the line to point B the normal thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, I had a typo here. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I that happens when I just do copy paste when I'm typing the PDF files, all right? Okay, so let's look at one example, find the equation of the tangent plane and normal line at the point negative two, one, negative three to the ellipsoid given by x squared over four plus y squared plus z squared over nine equals to three. In this case, what are we gonna do? We're gonna treat this like, a, like an implicit function. And the reason why we cannot treat this surface as an explicit function is because, well, if we try to solve for z, do you see that eventually we will have to use a square root property giving rise to two different solutions? So we have an issue there. So that's why instead, um, I'm gonna subtract three on both sides and treat this like um, x squared over 4 plus y squared plus z squared over 9 minus 3 set that equal to 0 but ultimately this is b equal to big F. All right so what do we need to so let's get the equation of the tangent plane and for the equation of the tangent plane we need two pieces of information the gradient and um, uh, and well, you'll see, so the gradient, which is nabla f, that's gonna be the derivative with respect x, which is uh, x over two, uh, that's a two y, and that's a two over nine, or two z over nine. All right, so now we need to evaluate this gradient at the point, negative two, one, negative three. And doing it so well, all we do is just plug in the x, y, and z values, whatever it corresponds. That is uh, negative two over two, two times one, and two times negative three over nine. And that gradient will be the vector given by negative one, 
and negative two thirds. All right, so that's one piece of information. Well, so we have enough information to get the equation of the plane that is tangent to the given surface at a given point, negative two, one, negative three. So all we do is simply, um, so that's a partial F with respect x, x minus x naught plus partial, oh well, actually, let me change notation because ultimately we, uh, well never mind, so, so yeah, that's fine, partial f with respect x times x minus x naught plus partial f with respect y times y minus y naught plus partial f with respect z times z minus z naught equals to zero. Well, this partial derivatives are going to be these elements of the vector that we just found in the previous step. So all we have to do is write negative 1 times x minus something plus 2 times y minus something and minus 2 thirds z minus something. What are those somethings? That's actually the x naught, y naught, and z naught that we are given, which is the point at which we are finding the equation of that tangent plane. And that point is negative 2, 1, negative 3. But careful because x minus negative 2, that becomes a 2. And uh, y minus 1, that's fine. And z minus negative 3, that's a plus 3. So that's a good result. However, how about we distribute this to get the equation in, in, the, in the other form? So that's going to be negative x minus 2 plus 2y minus 2 minus 2 thirds of z and minus minus 2 actually because 3 and the 3 the 3's three in the numerator and denominator get cancelled and that's going to be equal to 0. And let's combine like terms so negative 2, negative 2, negative 2 that's a negative 6 and negative x plus 2y minus 2 thirds of z and that equals to zero. All right, so from here we have a couple of options. If we, can, we can multiply both sides of the equation by three so we don't get this uh, rational exponent. That's an okay move. And at the same time, uh, well, let me leave it like this. So this will be negative three x plus 6y, and then minus 2z, and 6 times 3, that's a negative 18, equals to 0. Or at the same time, we can move the 18 to the right-hand side. So negative 3x plus 6y minus 2z equals to 18. So that's the equation of the plane. All right? What else do we need? Well, we need to get the equation of the, of the normal line, right? And in this case, for the equation of the normal line... I have a question. Yes. Why do you, in the beginning, move the 3 over? Mm, that's to create an implicit function of f. So what we do in this case is to have all terms, uh, all the terms on the left-hand side, and that defines a new function f, which is an implicit function rather than an explicit function the way we did with f, with z equals f of x, y, because in this case, it's not possible to solve for z explicitly, because if we try to solve for z over here, I mean, let's subtract these two terms and multiply both sides by nine, but then we take the square root of z squared, to cancel the squared, that will create two different solutions, a plus or minus by the square root property. And well, so that's gonna be troublesome when finding gradients. So we would have to, in a way, find two different gradients. And so that's why we create instead an implicit function instead. So that's part one, tangent plane. Part two, it's the normal line. 
And recall that the normal line is again, uh, it's just, it's R of T, R of T, which is the vector, the initial, ve the, the initial vector, which is given by the point plus T times the gradient of F evaluated at X naught, Y naught, Z naught. All right, and we'll, we have already all this information. We don't have to, to calculate anything else. So R prime of T equals to uh, negative two, one, negative three, plus T times the gradient at that given point, which in this case, it was negative one to negative two thirds. And again, well, you can go about different versions of writing this equation of a line, right? Number one, so we have that uh, component form, but ultimately, just to recall a little bit on, on notation, so that'll be negative two plus or minus t in the direction of i plus one minus two t or plus two t in the direction of j plus negative three minus two-thirds t in the direction of k. So depending on the notation, the reason why I go one more step is because my MATLAB may ask you for one version or the other or maybe even both. You might remember some of the exercises just gives you different blanks to fill in some numbers, some, in some cases the component form, in some cases i, j's and k's. All right? So. So for the next example, um, we got a surface given by z equals 9 minus x squared minus y squared over 4. Find the equation of the tangent line and the normal line to the surface s at the point 1 comma a. And, oh, it's the All right. So we're going to do the same. Except that this time we're going to do it in two different ways. I'm going to do both ways, the, the explicit way and the implicit way. And in this case we can do the implicit way because we have this function z as sum f of x. Why? So in this case we can go the other way. But in this case I'm going to show you both ways. So you can see in which, like in this case, you can, you, we can do it both ways. The other one, the previous example, it's only doable via the implicit function way. All right? So let's call this method one. Implicit. So we need to write a function. Um, so that is move all these terms to the left hand side and define z equals o. z or act well in alphabetic order x squared plus y squared over 4 my, uh, plus not minus plus z minus 9 equals to 0 which defines the big F function. All right. So what are we going to do? Number one, uh, tangent plane. So we need to find the, the gradient, which in this case is going to be 2x, um, 2y over 4, which is y over 2, or actually what well, I should have gotten uh, negative for some reason. Okay, never mind, because I had it the other way. Well, actually what I did in my notes, let me do it the other way. That's nine minus x squared minus y squared over four because I don't want to get the wrong results. And that's uh, plus minus, zero, minus z. So that's gonna be negative two x for the gradient and negative y over two comma negative one, which is the derivative uh, with respect to z. So that's the gradient. We need to evaluate the gradient 
at the given point, which is 1, 0, 8. And that's a negative 2 times 1, comma, well, 0 over 2, negative 0 over 2, and, uh, well, this is constant, that's just negative 1. There's no letter to plug in any value. And that vector will be the vector um, negative 2, 0, and negative 1. All right? What else do we need? Well, actually, we have all the information to get the equation of the plane. Uh, so that's, uh, well, let me use the other version, fx, x minus x naught, plus f sub y, y minus y naught, plus f subscript z, z minus z naught, equals to zero. So this fx, fy, and fz, respectively, are the components of the vector that we found in the previous step, that is, the, the gradient. And they're going to go here, here, and here. And x naught, y naught, z naught are going to be the coordinates x naught, y naught, z naught, given at, for, the, for the given point. So let's just substitute this value, so that's negative 2. Negative 2 x minus x naught, which is 1, plus um, 0 times y minus y naught, which is also 0, plus a, or not a, that's minus 1, times z minus z naught, which is 8, and that equals to 0. So that's going to give us the equation of the plane. Uh, let's simplify this a little bit. Negative 2x and negative 2 times negative 1 plus 2, and that's going to go 0, and minus z plus, be careful with signs, 8 equals to 0. And in this case, well, let's move that 8 to the other side. So, or actually, in this case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to solve for z this time, just so I can show you something. So, uh -huh. let's see. So, negative 2x, and that's 8 plus 2 plus, equals to 10 equals to z. So, that's the equation of the plane. Z equals negative 2x plus 10, and the reason I'm doing it this way is so when I do it, the other way, the, me the second method that is using the explicit function, so you can see how the result will be exactly the same. Alright, so that being said, let's go about method 2. Explicit. And for the explicit function, well, we're giving this as a f of x. So f of x, y, we have an f of x, y in this case, because that z is a function of x and y. That's a 9 minus x squared minus y squared over 4. And we can go about the gradient for this, which in this case is... Um, uh, negative 2x and negative y over 2. In a very similar way that we got the, the first two components for the gradient in the previous method, and all we do is find or evaluate this gradient at the point, in this case, notice we have only two components, so we, we're just going to evaluate it at the point 1, comma 0. Not, not the order triple, so it's going to be an order pair this time. So, plug in 1, whatever you see the letter x, plug in 0, whatever you see the letter y, so that's a negative 2 times 1, negative 0 over 2, and that's a negative 2, comma, 0. So, and the vector, if you notice, is very similar to the one we did it using the first method. But now we're going to use a different formula to get the equation. In this case, let me get, let me write down the formula, so so you don't flip flip pages back. So 
that's going to be z subscript t that's the, the derivative the partial derivative of f with respect x x minus x naught plus partial f with respect to y y minus y naught plus f of x naught comma y naught so well these partial derivatives are the components of the vector of the gradient vector and let's go about that calculation so z of t equals negative 2 times x minus x naught in this case x naught is 1 so minus 1 and plus 0 times y minus 0 and well in this case f of x 0 y 0 that is the z value corresponding to the given order pair so if we didn't get that value of z then we would have to plug in the given x and y on the given equation but in this case we don't need because we are given an order triple and that value of z what's that a so that's f of x naught y naught so plus eight and well so if we simplify this equation that's negative 2x plus 2, that term gets zeroed out, plus 8. Wait a minute, isn't it the same result? All right, it's the same result. So for the normal line, Well, I don't have it on my notes, but I mean, it's very easy to get. Well, number one, it's going to be R of T. So that's uh, the initial point which corresponds to the vector. That's uh, 1, 0, 8 plus T times the gradient evaluated at a point, which in this case is negative 2, 0, negative 1. And again, let me write this in as a linear combination of the unit vectors i, j, and k. So this will be 1 minus 2t in the direction of i plus 0 minus 0t. Well, that's just 0j. Uh, well, I'm not going to... Well, let me write down the 0j plus 8 minus t in the direction of k. So again, depending on which notation you would be you, you get asked on the homework, but, but on the exam, I, I will be just looking for this component form. That's enough. All right. All right. So let's see what's next. Uh, 